So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, dear colleagues from the panel, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I will try to provide uh, within the next couple of minutes uh, an answer to the question. Uh, and I think we have an answer, actually. Um, let me also, before I start, to thank the ITU for this invitation. <clears throat> it's a great honor and pleasure to be here. Uh, and uh, I'm trying to change the slide. I think it's relevant to, to say a few words about Jesse. Uh, the Global East Sustainable in Initiative is a quite young organization. It was created around six years ago with a, a very small number of companies. Some of the original members disappeared, like the AT&T or Telstra from Australia. Uh, but uh, within the last two years, uh, we saw a greater interest in this organization in result of some initiatives that we undertook. Um, and uh, as uh, it's stated here, we want to address sustainability issues the organization is led by the industry itself. It's open to the full ICT industry. The good uh, news about this organization, I think we are unique as an organization since we bring together manufacturers, operators, and regional associations. Uh, we have a partnership with UNEP and the ITU, uh, as well as with the European Network Telecoms Organization and the United States Telecoms Association. Uh, we also partner with NGOs, the Carbon Disclosure Project, and WWF. Uh, we have a cooperation agreement with the GSMA and the ICC, the Electronic Industry Code of Conduct, which is a group of uh, manufacturers based in the US, which is bringing together some 40 uh, big manufacturers. Uh, we have uh, quite <clears throat> interesting activities in the supply chain area, and finally, as a sustainability organization, we address the triple bottom line. So this is our current membership. As you can see from this slide, we have quite impressive number of companies, uh, most of them coming from Europe and the US. Uh, up to now, we have failed to enlarge our membership to Japan. So I hope that this opportunity will be um, the time f to get some Japanese companies into our organization so we really have a global reach. We had Panasonic in our organ organization, but last year for reasons that we don't know really, Panasonic suspended membership, and uh, we hope that we will have some companies in this area as well. <coughs> uh, we, we, we follow a what we call a double strategy uh, in relation uh, to, to climate change, which is the topic of today's discussion. On one end, uh, we are, as companies, actively implementing measures leading to increasing energy efficiency and decoupling energy consumption from CO2 emissions. And uh, on the other end, our companies offer service to customers which increase their energy efficiency as well. And uh, you, as experts in this uh, conference, uh, you all know which type of services like tele-audio conferencing to replace traveling and telework or to avoid uh, commuting. Uh, as I said uh, in this slide, we walk the talk. Uh, we have been engaging in different initiatives. Uh, it's part of the, of the IT report I saw that it was distributed. It was mentioned this um, the study that we commissioned uh, and that we have done together with WWF, uh, the telecommunications operators in Europe uh, sponsored this study, Saving the Climate at the Speed of the Light. Uh, we have committed with the, uh, WWF to reduce our carbon footprint as well as to help the carbon foot, to reduce the carbon footprint of our customers. Uh, there are lots of opportunities and risks, but as you can see from these slides, the opportunities are much higher than the risks involved. So if we look at the roadmap that we agreed with WWF, up to 2010, our CO2 footprint will be around 5 million CO2 emissions, 
and the savings that we can create altogether are around 50 million. Uh, so this is one example. But I think today, and the reason why I'm probably that I'm here, uh, is to talk about the current study that we are uh, running together with the climate group and with McKinsey. Uh, this study, uh, the bad news is that I cannot yet disclose the real figures. We are launching the study the next 5th of June. Uh, 5th of June is the environmental day. We will be doing a global launch of the study uh, in Brussels with President Peroso. Uh, we are inviting as well UNEP uh, to launch the study as uh, CEOs of uh, the, the biggest uh, our corporations. Uh, the good news is that I will give you an in insight about the outcomes of this study, uh, which to some extent will provide also an answer to the question raised at the beginning. So I will, uh, let's say, increase your appetite up to the next fifth of June, or, or I will try to do so. Um, I would like you to drive you briefly uh, about the, the study itself. Why have we done this study? Uh, because we want to deliver the first globally comprehensive picture of direct and indirect, indirect carbon emissions of telecoms, computing, and services, and software. Uh, we want to define common themes and issues across the ICT life cycle identifying critical trends, scenarios, and impact assessments for the ICT sector up to 2020, uh, to create a roadmap to allow the ICT sector to act now on reducing global energy usage and greenhouse gas emissions, and to examine how the application of ICT can not only deliver energy savings and carbon reduction, but do so in a way that drives even greater economic growth and productivity. So on one end, we are looking to our carbon footprint, what can ICT do in terms of reducing CO2 emissions, but we are also at the same time to looking at business opportunities. And uh, the main questions that we are addressing in this study are, uh, I think, quite well explained in this, in this slide. Uh, we want to look how can ICT reduce the, car the global carbon footprint on one end, and on the other end, how can ICT grow the global low carbon economy. And this is the framework within that we developed this study. Uh, we realized that new applications and technologies rely on ICT to distribute and collect information and increase uh, the amount of content that must be stored, the comp computational requirements of devices, the number of connections, and the bandwidth necessary to operate. Uh, we all know that uh, there is the need for data storage capacity has been increasing at 56%. This is a, uh, something that we discovered with, uh, with the, this study. Uh, we, we are seeing more and more internet users, more mobile phone users. So it is no question that uh, uh, ICT, uh, our own carbon footprint will be increasing uh, in the future. So the 2% that uh, we have been talking about from Gartner are no longer a reality or will no longer be a reality in, in the near future. Uh, we concentrated the study on two key areas. Uh, one area was related to dematerialization and the other to efficiency. Uh, we realized that dematerialization faces fundamental behavioral barriers while efficiency faces conventional business barriers. And those barriers in relation to dematerialization, um, the key barriers are that uh, it requires fundamental change in behavior or demand for different product services, must overcome network effects, habits, uncertainty regarding impacts. In what relates to efficiency, it may require large upfront investment with long payback time, requires capabilities and skills, and requires appropriate regulatory regime and standards. Uh, I must say that uh, within the study, we spent more time <clears throat> in the second area. Uh, the area of dematerialization is one of the areas that we will further deep uh, down after the, the first uh, study results, and it is our intention to, to jump further in this area uh, once we publish the report. Uh, 
this slide has never been shown to anyone. This is a first. Uh, so within the study, we have, we have identified four deep dives that offer the best mix of abatement opportunity in terms of CO2, market opportunity, and feasibility. So as you can see, we identified around 15 areas, although in the study we are concentrating only on four key, key areas. Uh, one interesting thing that came out from this is that for forestation, deforestation monitoring is the area with the greatest CO2 abatement potential. So there is a huge opportunity here for ICT. Uh, nevertheless, we also realized that uh, um, since this is a global study, we wanted to, and we agreed to concentrate on, on other areas, and those are smart buildings. Uh, we concentrated the smart buildings research on, on US and Canada, industrial motor optimization, we've done that in China. Uh, in what relates to smart grid, uh, we concentrated the, the, the research in, uh, in India, and in relation to efficient logistics and supply chain, the research concentrated in Europe. Uh, so these were, th these were the four deep dives that we analyzed within the study. The next slide is not coming up. Uh, and basically this slide shows uh, the, the areas that uh, we have been involved, as I said, uh, US and Canada, China, India, and, um, and, and Europe. So, uh, since I'm almost arriving to the, my limit time, uh, I would like to finalize with uh, some key messages that <clears throat> are quite st strongly coming out from our study. Uh, we think that the ICT sector is central to the transition to a low carbon economy. Uh, as uh, we recognize today, it represents 2% of worldwide energy consumption and related carbon emissions, with further growth by 2020. And this further growth will be according to our estimates in this study, around 3%, driven primarily by new needs in emerging markets, especially in China and in India. ICT can also facilitate carbon reductions across sectors worldwide to a much higher order of total emissions by 2020. And uh, although I cannot disclose the, the figure today, I tell you that this number is quite surprising. The focus so far has been on dematerialization or substitution of high carbon activities for lower impact activities like video conferencing or telecommuting. But the, our study shows that the scope for efficiency measures from providing platforms through which energy efficiency can be captured across all sectors of the economy is potentially many times larger. So all of these opportunities represent new markets for ICT and other high tech sectors with large value at stake from the savings that can be obtained. That value will be divided between the end users and the solution providers. Total value across the opportunities we identified, that is efficiency gains from logistics, energy savings associated to buildings, reductions in transmission and distribution losses from the ad adoption of a smart grid and motor systems op optim optimization could amount to many hundreds of billion euro. This does not take into account the additional value placed on these technologies from en non-energy related benefits. It does not take in into account as well the savings if there is a price of carbon. To realize these opportunities, Multiple barriers will need to be overcome, market barriers, policy barriers, behavioral bar barriers, or some combination of the three uh, have been identified. These barriers can be seen as opportunities for the sector and point to policy and the industry implications. So in fact, we will be delivering a factual report on one side. On, on the other side, we will be proposing concrete policy measures uh, uh, to, to policy makers to, to the future. So we think there are opportunities. Uh, we need to apply the strengths of the ICT sector to enable climate change solutions. We need to reduce inefficiencies in current products and processes. We need to decouple economic, economic growth from energy use across the econom economy through the intelligent systems design or through retrofit of existing building transport and power 
infrastructure. We need to focus on the emerging economies and invest now to prevent locking in carbon intensive practices and technologies to enable better decision maker and behavior change through better information provision, feedback and response. And we need to enable new low carbon ways of working and living <clears throat> through collaborations with other sectors. So if I may finalize uh, and uh, taking into account the, the results that we already know coming out from this study uh, and answering to the question that is put forward in front of us, I think that uh, ICT is up to the rescue. We will be definitely part of the solution. We, we recognize every sector are part of the problem. We are part of the problem as well. But the contribution that we can give to climate change and to reduce CO2 emissions is much higher, much, much higher than our carbon footprint. And what I want to, to state clearly here today is that we are really part of the solution to combat climate change. Thank you very much.